Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Entrepreneur Investor Connection. My name is Miguel Sanchez, and I help people create and fund the future. So today, of course, we're again going over the metaverse experience of Sandbox, the Alpha Pass, the, the way that they are helping educate landowners by incentivizing us to go through these tutorials, gamification, and they're paying us. And today, I believe if I finish this quest, I will be rewarded with 500 sand tokens. Those are um, worth, I think, about five, six dollars right now. So it's a lot of money. So I've already loaded up the game. Um, let's see what it's about. All right, so speak. Hey, you, this is a restricted area. Who let you through? I just went through the portal. So one thing is, another thing is this game dialogue. Like, it's, like, very much like um, role-playing games and stuff like that. And I see how this can be used. Again, this is another thing that Decentraland doesn't have, I think, baked in the same way, at least from what I've seen. Not every experience has it. This, every single experience has it. Ah, something to do with these meta roots, I suspect. They tend to interfere with the metaversal travel. Meet me in the surface, the portal up top, just climb up the wall and follow the yellow sign. All right, so. Okay. I'll climb here. Yeah, all right. So, okay, starting below the, the ground, climbing up. All right. The Green Inferno is a restricted area traveler, scientists only. I should report you to the authorities, but I'll help you just this time. You need to exit through that portal. But the portal is not working. All right. Yes, well, that's unfortunate. I happen to know how to power it if you can do a little something for me first. Okay, so... This is where the quest is going to be. What do you mean a little something? Right to the point. I like that. I will give you a list of 10 ingredients. Oh, this one is going to take some time. I knew they were going to make me earn it. Um, I need them to complete a certain experiment. What kind of experiment? That's classified. Be thankful I'm even helping you. Do you agree? If so, I will give you the list. Smells fishy, but I don't have a choice. All right. Collect the ingredients. There. Okay. All right. So there's um. Are there any indicators in this, where these ingredients are? Okay. Oh, but maybe. Oh, you can do multiple quests at the same time. Let's see something. Okay, that's not even an alpha quest. So they almost got me. All right. So this is really what it's gonna take to get the, the five hundred cent. Welcome to the Green Inferno Traveler. I'm sure you will be coming here again. So you should familiarize yourself with the area notable places. Yep. All right. So this is four points of interest. All right. We've done this the last few days. So, okay. As you see now, I got multiple quests going on at the same time, which is cool. Um, all right. So now let's do, take care of those. All right. So that was one. These are easier because they put the points of interest, so I know. Oh, wait, what's this? Oh, okay, I got to fight, huh? Okay, so those things are where you get your life back. Thanks. So, so this is the first one where I see where it's kind of like a do things, but then you're also in this environment where you have to fight. So that's interesting. I haven't seen that yet. It was either a game, a straight game, or an experience. This is a hybrid. So, okay, I, I just received what I needed to get the 500 sand. All right, so let me just go back to this person, make sure. Keep scoring from All right, so basically I did it. I got the 500 sand. If I go to see rewards. I got all the rewards now. I just have to wait to claim it in 11 days. Um, but 
you guys just watched me do all the things it took to to get this thousand sand and three nfts it wasn't that bad of course um you know they didn't want to make it too difficult on people but um i think that was worth it for sure for me <laughs> all right silver key silver key is needed no matter how you get always in my Gold key needed. All right. So I guess I need to go around and fight and find stuff. Oh, there's some up there. Let's see what that is. This might be another. Need the, the my sons to do this. But let's see. I might be able to. All right, so that was one ingredient. Nice. That was all right. So the other one is over there. How the hell do I get that? All right, there it is. Okay, so now Could have risked it and did it, but I didn't want to take the risk. Another ingredient. Man, but these 10 of these, I don't know if I got time to do this right now. I guess I'll give it, have a meeting at 11. Let's see how many ingredients I can find. And then I'll let my ringer sons do the rest. Um, honeycomb, that's pretty cool. Um, what am I seeing here? The, the, the hybrid of an educational experience and like a game that you have to like fight and do things. You see, when you have, whenever you have the sword, that means, you know, there's some fighting in, in the game. One thing that I wanted to see is with the fighting, is it only swords or is there like shooting as well opportunity? Cause that opens up to different types of games, right? Like first person shooters are popular games. And if you do a first-person shooter in here, then you could probably make some really popular games. But again, haven't seen any like that yet. It's all been like sword games um, where you swing the sword around. Oh, oh. Um, but this is this is also one piece of land. So you guys know. All right, got the five hundred sand. It's like three thousand dollars. This is no joke. Um, uh oh, there. All right, so I, I gotta find seven more ingredients. All right, there's one all the way up there. I don't know how I'm gonna get that. This is where my own personal like lack of interest in gaming kind of throws off. I wish there was a way that they would create a game that is like. I guess it depends what type of gamer you are because I guess I like mind mind teasers, you know, like things that make you think. Um, and I'm not sure if any of these are that. Oh, okay. I gotta get all the way up there. I'll, I'll do that. Um, again, I guess the, the the big takeaway on this one is again, look at how much land. This is one piece of land. And so far, I've spent like at least 10 minutes in this land um, trying to figure out how to get these ingredients and get the alpha pass to make the, the money. But I got the alpha pass pretty fast. I think I got the, the, the thing to win the 500 sand in like a few minutes. Oh, that's so this part, the part that I got to find these 10 ingredients for, this is like my own imposed thing because I already got my my reward. Like I could go, I, I made the $3,000, but I'm also trying to understand like what's possible here. So this is where I spend the time, a little bit of extra time to go through an experience. See, even this board thing, walking on a board, it gives you ideas, right? Like of something you can create yourself. 
I also want to see what I end up getting after I do this work for this um this uh this quest. Because if, if I don't get anything, I don't know. I, I guess people game just to game. That's a thing. Um, oh, that's how you do it. You climb up the side. All right, there you go. All right, so I gotta try to do that. All right, so I got that one. Can I climb up the side here? All right, how the hell you get up there? Oh, right here, boom. All right, so what? How the hell you do that? Oh, all right, I got it. So this is what I mean. I guess this is a little bit of a mind, um, something that you got to really figure out. It's not just an easy hack and slash kind of idea. There is, oh, that sucks. Oh, I was able to get that on. All right, there you go. So it's a mind game thing that, you know, you got to kind of think through. That's cool. All right. Again, look at this land. This is all one piece of land. And they're not even using the full height, right? Think about these areas right here. I'm on this, this tall building. Everything can use, you can use all of this height and create all kind of environments on all these levels. It can be like tunnels. This is like pretty impressive what you could do in this um, sandbox, um, one piece of land. Again, what I'm super interested to see is people that use like 100 pieces of land. Like what are they doing in 100 pieces of land? <laughs> that is nuts. All right, how do I get up there? Let's see if there's anything else over here. I still only have found five things. And this is where, you know, again, when I first heard about the sandbox land, they said you could probably spend one to two minutes walking around the land. While I'm experiencing this with you guys, you see, like, you could spend a lot more than one to two minutes walking around the land. Like, this is like, I don't even know amount of time, and I'm even I'm questioning doing it right now. I'm like, all right, this is this is cool, but uh, there's stuff to do. But it is good to understand as an investment, right? Again, it comes to come at this entrepreneur investor. What? would you do with your land right so with me oh i fight this guy b um uh, you know what i'm not gonna do this oh i'm trying all right um i am trying to figure out what would i oh wow I'm trying to figure out what would i do with my land right i have four but they're not they're not right up against each other. So I got like one piece like this in four different areas. So what would I do? First thing I thought about is through all the experiences that I've been doing here, one thing I, I liked was um, maybe I could do a game that educates people on decentralized finance and shows them how to do it um, and rewards them financially for doing it. Like maybe, they, oh, Maybe there's a way to pay people if they get through um, the uh, journey. But they, they get, it's like a tutorial, a gamified tutorial. Again, that's, these are just ideas because just the idea is the easy part, as if you're an entrepreneur, you know it. All right, boom. Ah, all right, I did it. Can I go up higher? Yes, I can. Oh, woo. I thought I forgot. <sighs> this is where I need the ringers. <laughs> oh, my.
man. Oh, he pushed me. Oh, wow. I'm not doing it. I'm good. I'm not going back up. All right. So let's see if there was anything up there. All right. I got six out of the 10. If there's another one up there, I'm going to be upset because I was right there. So six out of the 10 ingredients. Oh, there's one up top there. All right. Nice. Um, I guess the hack and slash thing is another thing I'm trying to think through. I'm thinking of a game that based on one of the characters, I, um, I plan to make some IP around when I mean IP, I mean like create my own stories. If you don't know, I went to school for animation. I wanted, I wanted to be the, the, the Bronx Walt Disney as a kid. And in while I was doing that and learning about the technology to make animation, I like really got into technology. So I still want to, to do what I went originally wanted to do as a kid, right? Which is storytelling. I want to be kind of like a mix of Elon Musk and Walt Disney. I want to make sure I'm helping us get to space, but I also want to tell cool stories. So one of my ideas is um, I could make us make one of my character stories have a game in this environment. And I, I did think of a way to do like some type of hack and slash kind of game with that character. And actually that character is my NF is one of the NFTs that I um I minted. I'm not selling it, but it's like the first test of a, of a mint of an NFT that I did. Oh, let's see where else is. So again, this is me thinking through, you know, what what is my metaverse play going to be? I think we all need a metaverse play. It's just like web. When the web came out, if you were like, and this was me, I was literally working at print places and stuff like that. And the web came along and it was like, all right, I'm not going to be working on print anymore because the web is definitely going to eat print. And I saw that right away and I stopped doing anything print and I just went all in on the web because I wanted to make sure I was going to be one of the best people at that skill set. I feel the same exact way right now with this, like web three and crypto and crypto gaming. It's gonna eat the internet. Everything is gonna be this. So if I don't, if you don't have a play that you're doing, you know, you could be in a business that's out of business. Think about print shops. How many print shops do you see? You know what I mean? Like, imagine if when you were in print, you decided, oh no, I'm just gonna stay in this. You're probably not in a great position right now, right? So you got to look at what's coming and say, all right, how am I going to be in this? And, you know, of course, it's easier for people like me because I've, I've seen it multiple times. But I saw it the first time, one time too, you know? The first time I saw it was the internet, like I said, the internet and print. And I reacted and um, it definitely did me well. The one difference here is, when I did that, the only real way that I could take advantage of understanding that, oh, look at that dead animals, that's pretty cool. Um, the only real way that I could take advantage of that knowledge that this was the future was to learn the skills it took to be either an employee or a freelancer in this environment, right? So I did that. I became a developer, I became an animator, I got a bunch of projects, I, I, I had work whenever I wanted. This time, this is very different. This time you can invest in the companies that are doing this stuff. So if you think about it, last time I would have learned how to be a developer, learn how to make the animations in this game. This time I invested in buying land. I bought four pieces of land. I have I have a thousand of the token now because I did this. I didn't pay for the token. I, I earned it. But that is very different. Before you only really had the opportunity to be a skilled person in the environment. Now you have an opportunity to be a skilled person in the environment 
and invest in the vehicles that will power the future. You couldn't invest in Amazon 20 years ago. You, you had to wait till they went public. And this is early stage investing, which is the best returns on the investment. At what price would you buy land right now? One, one um, plot. That's a good question. It's hard for me now to, to look at these prices and say I would do it. Let's see what the prices are right now. Because, you know, when I did it, I paid $1,500. I said, I told you guys per land about $1,500 to like $1,800 I was paying, um, which was like a half an Ethereum. One, I had the Ethereum to buy it. Two, because I knew decentralized finance well enough, I was able to say, here's a win-win. I cannot sell my Ethereum, borrow off of it. Yeah, $1,500. <laughs> I could, And this is like two months ago, three months ago, something like that. And I recorded it on YouTube. If you guys would have been watching, you would have. And I literally said it on the thing. I believe this is like the next skyrocket. Um, so again, keep watching because whenever I see it, I'm going to make a video about it. But when I did it, I had saw that the central land, one piece of land was 6,700 that I had, I just purchased one land, but 6,700. So I realized, I said, you know what? I'm going to spend $6,000 in the, in sandbox. So I bought four pieces. Another big thing is I borrowed against my Ethereum and Bitcoin and Aave and Matic and Avalanche. And I used that money from borrowing to buy it. Because what? Worst case scenario, I still got to pay that loan back. Let's say the land goes to zero. I just got to pay my loan back and I still have the Ethereum, Bitcoin and all those coins. If I would have used my Ethereum to buy the land and it went to zero, I would have lost my Ethereum and that land value. So this is why I tell people before you start buying NFTs, make sure you understand decentralized finance because I think a major problem is happening right now where a lot of people are buying NFTs with their actual Ethereum. And most of these NFTs are not going to work out. This is just the law of business and nature, 80, 20 rule, 80% 80 80 of the money comes from 20% of the action. This happens in all of nature. So 80% of your money is going to come from 20% of the assets you buy. So if you're buying NFTs with your actual Ethereum, you have to hope you luck out on one of these, on one of these NFTs. And look at me right now. I have four pieces of land. The lands are worth probably around $60,000, something like that. But in order for me to, to, to use that money, I have to sell one of these lands, which I don't want to do. But with the cryptocurrency, I just told you, I could use that. I was able to borrow off of it to buy more land, right? So this is where decentralized finance is key in this whole ecosystem. If you don't understand that key element, you're probably doing all of cryptocurrency wrong. Because you're spending your actual real good assets like Bitcoin, Ethereum, the collateral assets on more risky assets. Like when people buy Shiba coin or the central land land or sandbox land, that is a risky asset. So you're basically selling your non, well, all crypto is risky, but it's less risky. Bitcoin is less risky than this. Ethereum is less risky than this. So if you're selling your less risky asset for the more risky asset, is that a good investment? Again, you got to think about it like an entrepreneur and an investor. No. But if you could keep your safe investment and borrow against it to take the risky investment, then it could be a win-win. And that's what happened with me. Of course, I still got to pay the loan back. So it's not like I'm free. So now I have to make a decision. Do I sell some of those coins that went up in value, this land that went up in value, or do I bring new money into the system to pay down the loan? But I have the option. That's my choice, right? Instead of the opposite way 
once you use your Ethereum to buy land, you got to just hope that land grows and you're going to have to sell it one day to use it. Eventually, there will be a way where you can borrow off of your land. I think, look, they're already setting up a DeFi area in Sandbox, which is interesting. I don't know exactly how it's going to work, but that was another reason I thought it made a lot of sense to own land in this platform. Because imagine if they let me borrow off of the land I have. I have four pieces of land. They're worth about 60K. Imagine they let me borrow even 50% off of that land value. That's $30,000 that I could use to do other things. Buy risky coins. Buy safe coins. Pay my bills. Again, this comes down to decentralized finance. If you don't understand decentralized finance, you're probably missing the biggest opportunity in cryptocurrency. It's, it's not NFTs. It's not even the coins. It's decentralized finance. All right. Can you clarify on what you mean by bringing more money and paying off the loan? Yes. So the next time I get paid in my real world jobs that I make money outside in the, you know, in the fiat world, I take some of that money and I bring it back into crypto and I pay off the loan. So right now I'm trying to not put as much money back into, I'm not putting all my money into crypto. I'm letting the crypto gains pay off the loans through decentralized finance. But if I wanted to, I could bring in new money every time I get paid, pay down the loan. And, and eventually I think I will get there. Um, I think I'm waiting to see what this crash is like. And once, once I feel like it's the lowest of the low, then I'll probably, I'm going to probably bring in all of my cash and be in this world completely. I, I don't see anything that's better than this right now. Stocks, real estate, I do not think that's a better opportunity than crypto. Not financial advice. This is just me. I could be totally wrong. And this whole market could crash 90%. So this is where you got to create your own convictions. You can't watch people like me, watch YouTube, watch TikTok, watch Instagram, and just do what those people do. You have to figure out what's right for you. There's a very good book everybody should check out. It's called The, the Psychology of Money. It's about how you feel about money. You have to understand that and understand your, your risk tolerance, the assets that you think you would enjoy investing in. And you have to make sure you understand your limits because there's some people that they'll, they'll invest in land like this, put the 6,000 and then they can't sleep at night because they're worried about their money. And if that's going to be you, it's probably not, not a good investment for you. So that's where all of this is, is lessons. You got you to gotta start learning them and um, and start applying what, what you learn, right? So, all right, let's see what we have here. So, one thing. Um, so for me, I used this year of cryptocurrency and I said, I'm going to go really in on cryptocurrency and I'm not going to worry about how much money I make or how much money I lose. I'm going to see how I feel and what I learn, I don't care what, what happens. That's why I started going crazy with NFTs. Even though my crypto was going pretty fine, I said, I need to learn the NFT game. I'm not going to just do crypto coins. I need to learn about the metaverse. I need to learn about NFTs. So I borrowed against my crypto and bought NFTs and metaverse land. Those things turned out to be right so far in six months. Who knows where all this value of all this will be? We, we could be back in a bear market where only Ethereum and, and Bitcoin are worth anything. And all these other coins are worth nothing. These NFTs are worth nothing. You don't know. Nobody knows. So the only thing you could do is be in it and see how you feel and then learn. Because if that happens next time, I'll take all my lessons and I'll be ready for the next time. Next time it, it, it's here, I'll take every lesson I learned and I will use it to make even more money next time. Um, and that's, this is another thing, like when I've been researching the people that have made like millions of dollars, there's one guy that turned $30,000 into $30 million. But one thing he says is it took four to five years or three to five years, something like that, because again, he caught the last pump, he learned his lessons, and then he brought those lessons to this pump. 
But imagine seeing it and getting a do-over after you understand all of this stuff. Yeah, I am self-employed as in as a currency trader and have investments in crypto. Yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to get there too. I'm borderline there, to be honest. I'm borderline there. I've been living off my crypto for a few months. This is the first month that I didn't feel comfortable borrowing off one of my banks to pay off on my, my monthly bills because the market crashed right when bills were due. So I was like, you know what? I don't know how low this is going to go. I don't want to use money to pay my bills. And then the market crashes and then they, they liquidate my loan. So I said, you know what? This month, I'm just not going to do it. Um, I'm going to pay my bills through fiat. I took you for a resourceful venture and I was right now. My experiment can continue. Now then we grind this just so Justin North can see me short. Oh, wow. Ah, whoa. Help me, help me. I'm stuck. All right, that was cool. So something happened and it triggered like a... Um, like an experience change, which is interesting. So that means like you could create environment changes on that are triggered. That's interesting. But again, now they're gonna make me do more and I got a call in 20 minutes. Let's see if I can make this happen in 20 minutes. If not, I'm gonna need the ringers, AKA my sons. All right, so where is this guy? Help the scientists reach the release of Shile Dali. Where the hell is he? He's not even telling me. He's not even giving me a hint of where this guy is. This is going to be a problem. Oh, there he is. All right, he's up there. All right, how do I get up there? Whoa. This wasn't there before, right? I don't think this was there. Unless it was there and I didn't see it. Which is very possible. It looks like they just changed the board. Like, like they literally added an, a, an asset as a trigger to an event, which is cool. And again, you see, this is this is why I'm doing this. So basically, if you create an environment, something can, can trigger the environment to change. So I know that may not sound important, but what that means is your experiences can trigger full other experiences. And that is pretty interesting because now the land becomes more than one piece of land. Think about that. You can, you can basically make multiple experiences on the same land if I'm right. Again, oh, wow. Um, again, this is why I do this and this is why I'm doing it live. I want, I'm just talking it through. Anybody watching this that's trying to figure out how to get into the metaverse, you got to do the same type of thinking. Okay, so what am I going to do if I buy land? Like, what's the whole reason to even buy land? What am I going to do with it? So this is what I'm doing. I'm All right, so let's say I make an experience. Here's an example of what I mean by that. Oh. Um, let's say I make an experience where I teach people decentralized finance. What if the first phase is the whole board is triggered to understanding the difference between a, a, a real world bank and a crypto bank right and the whole experience is you going through a challenge that teaches you the difference between oh that hurts teaches you the whole the difference between a physical and a crypto bank and then once you finish it i could use this entire board this whole one by one experience on that and then the second one would be, all right, now I'm going to teach you about collateral assets in cryptocurrency space. And I use the entire board to teach you about collateral assets. That could be interesting. That could be very interesting. So you asked me a question, um, Sh Shaila. Um, how much would I pay for land right now? I think I will wait. Because this is what I think is going to happen. Again, not financial advice. I could be totally wrong and this stuff could keep shooting up. But this is what I think based on my experience is going to happen. 
the the prices are, are are being pumped right now because of this experience so because they're giving away money and they're teaching people what to do with their land the land is more valuable right now because people are have interest in it and they're they're like oh man i'm not gonna be i'm gonna miss the boat it's like fomo right crypto fomo but with land so i think the prices are high I think what's going to happen is after these this um this experience is done and the the, the alpha pass is over the project is going to go back to being a little bit dead because they're not going to have this big event so then people are going to be looking at at the oh it was right there they're going to be looking at their land and their crypto and and with crypto, people want it to move very fast. So they're going to be like, oh, man, I'm sitting on this land and it's worth 10000 But I don't even know the next time I'm going to be able to do anything with it. So people are going to probably be willing to sell their land for less than market value. You're probably going to be able to wait till after all this experience is done and, and get somebody that's looking to get rid of their land. Oh, oh. Somebody that's looking to get rid of their land because they want the money right now. You're probably going to be able to get somebody to give you like their land for like five thousand. Um, and I think it would be worth it at around five, five, seven thousand. I think it would be worth it because, like I said, I paid seven thousand for the central land, six thousand seven hundred, and that one piece of land is nowhere near as big as this piece of land. Nowhere near. So I'm just telling you what I did and what I thought. Again, I don't, I don't know enough financial advice, but I think if you're in the range of five to eight thousand, I still think it's a good deal because I do believe in ten, possibly twenty years, these lands are going to be worth a lot of money. Like, like I believe these lands are going to be worth more than homes in the real world. Why is that? Because a home, sure, you can live in a home. You can have you know, safety in the rain. But that home does not make money every day. It costs you money every day. So if you had a piece of land that was making you money every day, isn't the value of that going to be more than a home that doesn't? So if I told you there's, the people who have land in, in this world is are going to be making even, even $100 a day, $50 a day, that is, that means that's like $30,000 a year at $100 a day, $30,000, $36,000. That means if you just take regular business math and you say the multiple of the value is based on the revenue, you could do it like that. And that doesn't even put in the, the potential of the metaverse, right? So we just take revenue and we say, we're going to take a conservative 5X on revenue. That means the land is worth at least 150k 5x and and in tech the revenue multipliers are 20. oh all right my next meeting is 15 minutes if i can't get this in the next 10 minutes i'm gonna just leave it open and wait for my sons my ringer sons to get home from school um any other questions what would you say is a better investment in your opinion, sandbox or decentraland? That is a good question. So initially, what you are saying is to wait for the hype to die down. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I I don't know if it will though because of Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook. They have created this hype that I don't know will slow down. I do believe that this specific project, the hype right now around the Alpha Pass, is hyping the price. The central land does not have that. And the lands are, I think the lowest land in the central land is, let's find out. The cheapest land in the central land that you can just buy right now is well that can't be right. 
Hold on, that got to be big. Okay, right now. So look, almost three Ethereum. So again, like 12,000. Oh, no. This is... Sorry, my computer is really taking it on the chin because I'm streaming, I'm playing a game, I'm browsing. All right, 3,600 mana is 13,000. Wow, that's that's pretty crazy. So I doubled my investment, and my, my land is worth 10,000 mana. So... It went, it went crazy. When I bought it for 6,700, it was 10,000 mana. So now 10,000 mana is like 50,000. Um, again, I, I lucked out, really. I, I knew, I mean, luck is preparation meets opportunity, though, right? I lucked out because I was ready to be lucked out. You know what I mean? It wasn't that I just, you know, walked into, you know, all of this. Because, again, I was, I was prepared because I knew decentralized finance enough to borrow, to buy the land, and not spend my Ethereum in bitcoin and other things right so that was do i gotta walk around this whole thing oh my god um oh, all right right so there were there were pieces to the puzzle that i needed to to learn and oh i don't know how to do this um there were pieces to the puzzle that i had to learn to be able to take advantage of this of, of metaverse First was understanding good coins, buying coins that you can leverage, borrow off of, get good interest on, all that, create your own bank, which is what most of my content really is about. Again, I'm showing this game because I think there's going to be a, 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 a connection between those worlds eventually, but I want to make sure that I understand it before I teach it. So live on YouTube and everywhere else, I'm doing that. Um, so I had to learn about the coins, buying the right coins, not buying Shiba or Dogecoin or random coin X, Y, Z, buying coins that I can leverage when I see an opportunity. And then I saw the opportunity. I researched the opportunity. I, I went into the world. Well, Decentraland was the only world I could go into at that time. The reason why I bought Sandbox, and I've said this a few times, is because I was researching I was researching, I started to learn how to look at people's wallets because of ens.domains. You could look up people's wallets. Like if you really knew how, you could research and go to miguelsanchez.eth and you could see my wallet, what I have in my wallet, what NFTs I have, what um, what coins I have. But it's, that's in a public wallet that I'm okay with you seeing. It's not everything I have. I have land in other wallets. I have coins and other wallets, I have banks and other wallets, um, but you could do that. So I started to go to the venture capitalist wallets and I saw almost all of them had sandbox. And I, I really did not like the sandbox look and feel. I didn't, I don't like the square thing. I like Decentraland more, but I saw that all these people had it. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna, you know, see what happens i take another six thousand dollar investment and see what happens worst case scenario i i give the land to my sons eventually they they play meta i mean minecraft and all this stuff I, I can use it for meta bronx which is my um my nonprofit where a lot of the kids like gaming so i could teach them some of the crypto stuff through this i said all right i, I really can't lose by doing it so i did it and it shot up much faster than I thought it would. So that was my journey. Right now, if I had to choose one or the other, because they're the same price, I might say Sandbox. Because, I'll give you the reasons. It's easier to build on Sandbox land than it is on Decentraland. First of all. Second of all, the central land, I mean, Sandbox has this, this, this DeFi thing that they're going to launch. 
I don't, I haven't heard of that for, for Decentraland yet. I don't know if they're going to do it. It's in their plans, but I haven't heard it. You know what? I'm just going to jump at this guy. Did I miss? Yes, I missed her. <laughs> I took the holy, uh, the, the, the Hail Mary. Um, I guess I don't know. To, um, and then the, the third big thing is look at how much land you get for one piece of land. I just believe you're gonna be able to do more with your land in sandbox than in Decentraland because Decentraland, the land is pretty small. One piece of land is pretty small. This one piece of land is massive. Even in these experiences where this is the sandbox team making it, they're not even using all of the land. That's how much land they have to work with and these are one piece of land experiences. So I, I think it's a little bit cheaper to buy one piece of land in Sandbox. You have the, the space difference that you have a lot more space. You have the gamification aspect, which I think since Sandbox is like full of, it's a gaming experience before anything else. I think more people are going to be drawn to that. Um, more, probably more millennials, kids. I don't know about like the, the, the Gen X, Gen, Gen Z, I don't know what they're called. Um, I know I'm Gen X. Um, people older than that, I can't imagine people older than that doing this. Um, only reason I could do it well is because I play with my kids. I play Roblox with my kids. I play Fortnite with my kids, all that kind of stuff. All right. I think I'm going to end it here and I'm going to have my kids do this. <laughs> All right. So there is so much happening. I am the price and, and will not dip. I'm worried that the price will not dip. Yeah, I, I don't know. But when you look at the, the history, man, it's, it's just. I've never seen pumps like this that, that are sustained forever. And if you go to. Let's go to mana first. Actually, I'll take you to the biggest, the big dog, Bitcoin. Bitcoin, if you look at Bitcoin's history, I'm taking it to the max instead of, look at it. It pumps and it comes back down. Pumps, comes back down. Pumps, comes back down. Pumps, comes back down. That's, that's Bitcoin. All right, let's take the one with the second most history, Ethereum. And then we're going to go to max again. Same thing. Pump down, pump down, pump down, pump. It's going to have to be pump ups and downs. I just don't see a way around it. So now let's look at these two. Nana. Let's look at my max. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this. Pump down, pump down, pump down, pump down. Again, I don't know if it's going to ever come back down this low. I don't. I had a friend that was asking me around here, and I was like, I wouldn't do it because it's pumping. He did it anyway, and it went up to here. But then it came back down. So, so I say, it can be financial advice. You got to just make your own call. I, I bought it at Right here, I was buying. I was buying mana around this price because I was looking at the charts on on TradingView, which I've shown you guys how to do as well. Um, and then let's look at sand. But you borrowed the money off of your crypto investments already to fund the money to buy your land. Yes, yeah. So end of the day, still, you still want to buy at the best time, right? I, Cause I got to pay back that loan, whether I pay it back through crypto gains of collateral assets like Bitcoin, Ethereum, when they go up, I sell that and I pay down the loan or I bring in new money to pay down the loan or I sell a piece of land to pay off the loan. The loan still got to be paid. So you want to make sure you're buying at the best time. So you pay the least amount on the, you know, the loan is the least amount. All right, so let's go to max. Look at that. Again, look. From here, look at this. 
up, down, up, kind of down, up, 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 down, up, heading down. It could go like this. It could come like this. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I don't know. I was lucky. Again, I bought, actually, I, actually, I bought, like, around here. So I didn't buy the coin, though. I just bought land. Another good advice that I would take is buy the coin because that's more flexible. If you buy the coin and you need the money, you can sell the coin very easily. If you buy the land and you need the money, you have to sell the land. So you got to find somebody that's willing to pay you what your asking price is at the speed of the need, right? And that that's really tough, right? So you might need to take a loss just to get the money. So depending on your strategy, my strategy is a long-term strategy. When I put this money in, I knew I'm not going to look for it for ten for seven to ten years, just like regular venture capital. Seven to ten years, I'm not expecting to make anything off of this investment. Not, you know, so I know I was going to have to pay back that loan somehow. But in seven to ten years, I pay back a six thousand dollar loan to myself, where I'm getting interest in my crypto bank. Sign me up for that, right? So that's what I did, and that's how I did it. So that's why I can do that. But if you put that 6000 and you're like, I need this back within a year or two or months, you got to have the strategy for paying it back. Either you're going to bring in new money to pay back the loan, you're going to sell other crypto to pay back the loan, or you're going to sell that land to pay back the loan. Really the only options. But on that note, I have a meeting in two minutes. Thank you for watching the stream. Please like the video. Please like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Look out for my building the crypto bank. I'm actually making a video almost every day, growing a crypto bank. Um, I'm doing those as shorts. So look for that too. If you're interested in understanding how I'm doing the crypto bank stuff, I literally show everything. I, I literally made a video the other day where I showed from start to finish how you would create one. And it's like a five minute video. So shouldn't be that hard to do. Thank you. Thank you for appreciating me. I appreciate you for watching. Anybody watching, whenever you're watching, thank you for watching. Hopefully, you're taking advantage of the decentralized finance stuff. Not only this gaming and metaverse stuff, this stuff is very cool. It is. But it's all better once you're doing this when you understand decentralized finance because you're spending money in a better way. So hopefully, you take that advice. Thank you. Have a good rest of your day. See you tomorrow because it's another experience. All right. Have a good one.